Well, I would still work with and do homosexuals or anybody. That does not mean I believe what they're doing is good for everybody. That's why I don't do it for the most part, right? Isn't that why you, if you're not a homosexual, don't do it? All right? It, it, isn't it the reason you, you aren't a homosexual if you're a heterosexual like me? Because you don't desire homosexuality, not because you don't desire sex, right? Maybe there's some people that don't desire sex, but most people, most heteros desire sex. Do we not? So why don't we desire homosexual sex? Because it involves the use of our anus, or if you're two females, the non-use of a penis, a real one. That for heteros are essential for the act to be done correctly without any damage. Right? You can still simulate sex. And by simulate, I mean copy normal sex that's led to the reproduction of the species, which is why we're here. That's why it's normal. Right? Hetero, homosexual sex does not provide that benefit. So even though it's accepted, it's not normal. It would end the species if everybody practiced it unless you somehow created a way outside of sex that led to reproduction. So it's not normal. It's not the same as heterosexual sex in that regard. It's obvious. It's, it's, it's really not disputable. Although if you're a homosexual and you want to try to, feel free. If you don't have facts, though, I'm afraid I won't be able to uh, tolerate you for very long. Right? We can all have our opinions, all have our views, but if you really want to be taken seriously, you need to have facts and information. So let's get to it. Let's talk about some of that facts and information. This is an article I've had on my topical index and that I've referred to before when discussing this issue. The Health Risks of Gay Sex by John R. Diggs, Jr., MD. And we'll just take a look at a few things. He talks about sexual relationships between members of the same sex Exposing gays, lesbians, and bisexuals to extreme risks of sexually transmitted diseases, physical injuries, mental disorders, and even a shortened lifespan. There are five major distinctions between gay and heterosexual relationships with specific medical consequences. They are levels of promiscuity prior to the AIDS epidemic, a 1978 study found that 75% of white gay males claim to have had more than 100 times, 100 time, 100 lifetime male sex partners, excuse me. 15% claimed 100 to 249 sex partners. 17% claimed 250 to 499 partners. This is homosexuals. 15% claimed 500 to 999 homosexual partners. And 28% claim to have, claim more than 1,000. 28%. More than 1,000 lifetime male sex partners. This is for white gay males. In a 1978 study that this article is referring to. Levels of promiscuity subsequently de declined, but some observers are concerned that promiscuity is again approaching the levels of the 70s. Right, That was prior to the AIDS epidemic. And during the AIDS epidemic, I remember as well, I was young, but there was a lot of fear about having sex, especially unprotected sex, uh, during the 80s and, and even the 90s. So the medical consequence of this promiscuity is that gays have a great greatly increased likelihood of contracting HIV, AIDS, syphilis, and other STDs. Similar extremes of promiscuity have not been documented among lesbians. However, an Australian study found that 93% of lesbians reported having sex with men. Lesbians. Still having sex with men, so while their promiscuity rates are much lower in the gay community, among other lesbians, 93% of them, lesbians, have reported having sex with men. And lesbians were 4.5 times more likely than heterosexual women to have had more than 50 
lifetime male sex partners. Any degree of sex promiscuity carries the risk of contracting STD. So right, she sleeps with one of those men who slept with all these other men. It's like sleeping with all those men in many cases. And women are much more, uh, they retain what they receive from men more than men who, even if they have unprotected sex, can still not take in the kind of fluid exchange that women do during unprotected sex. So the risk is clear. What's another one? Physical health. Common sexual practices among gay men lead to numerous STDs, physical injuries, some of which are virtually unknown in the heterosexual population. Lesbians are also at higher risk for STDs. Is, is this homophobia, homosexuals, and those who support them? Are facts about what your acts result in homophobic to you? Does it sound homophobic when people read facts to you? Then I don't think you understand what homophobia is, or maybe homophobia isn't so bad after all, right? Aren't there things you're supposed to be afraid of? Aren't there things that when you're afraid of, it's good to get away from them because they'll hurt you? All right, well, you tell me, are these true facts or not? And we're not even through half of them yet. Let's go on. In addition to diseases that may be transmitted during lesbian sex, a study at an Australian STD found that lesbians were three to four times more likely than heterosexual women to have sex with men who were high risk. We kind of already read that in the first part. Mental health. It is well established that there are high rates of psychiatric illness, including depression, drug abuse, suicide attempts, among gays and lesbians. It goes on to state this is true even in the Netherlands where gay, lesbian, and bisexual relationships are far more socially acceptable than in the U.S. Depression and drug abuse are strongly associated with risky sexual practices that lead to serious medical problems. Lifespan, the only epidemiological study to date on the lifespan of gay men, concluded that gay and bisexual men lose up to 20 years of life expectancy. Monogamy, meaning long-term sexual fidelity, is rare in gay and lesbian relationships, particularly among gay men. One study reported that 66% of gay couples reported sex outside of the relationship within the first year. 66%! Right, you homosexuals may criticize heterosexual marriages and relationships for not lasting forever, right, or failing after a few years. The studies are showing that the number of partners you are having in even the first year are way beyond the few we heteros may have and fail in our relationships having. I mean, the risk isn't even close. 60% of gay couples report sex outside of the relationship within the first year. Nearly 90%, that's 9 out of 10 gay couples that were part of this study, had sex outside the relationship if it it lasted more than 5 years. So there's not even a, a close comparison. And we know that homosexual relationships are the least lasting. Lesbians, specifically, if you look it up, have the highest failure rate among relationship studies. So I encourage you to read this article. It talks about a lot more. I just read kind of the introductory um, points that it's going to highlight further. We'll read a few other items on page three under anal genital. Right, we're talking about things I think everyone knows. We're not going to get into too descriptive things, but, but basic anatomy, right? Even if you're 15, 16, This is not meant to be sexual. This is meant to tell you about what you already know concerning your body and what people who might teach you about heterosexual sex, homosexual sex, pansexual sex. It's all over the place. right? So they're not holding this back much anymore. Anal sex is the sine qua non for sex for many relationships, meaning the only way. Yet human physiology makes it clear that the body was not designed to accommodate this activity. The rectum is significantly different from the vagina, 
with regard to suitability for penetration by a penis. The vagina has natural lubricants and is supported by a network of muscles. It is composed of a mucous membrane with a multi-layered stratified squamous epithelium that allows it to endure friction without damage and to, a, to resist the immunological action actions caused by semen and sperm, like I was talking about before. In comparison, the anus is a delicate mechanism of small muscles that comprise an exit only. That means you're not supposed to go in. It only takes toxic fecal matter, the waste from your body that you need to get out. It's just trying to get that out. There's nothing about the anus or the anal organ that is designed or that is evolved that is in any way an indication it's to be used for sex and everything to show it's not, like we're talking about. With repeated trauma, friction, and stretching, the sphincter, the anal muscle, part of the anal muscles, loses its tone and its ability to maintain a tight seal. Consequently, anal sex leads to leakage of fecal matter that can easily become chronic. That's why they have to use plugs because they're stretching the anus out unnaturally in ways that are damaging to themselves. And then they call it love. Someone tell me, especially if you're homosexual, I'm not doubting that you feel good or even may feel what you call consider love. What's loving about homosexual sex? You're damaging yourself and that person. You're creating conditions within that person where they're going to have ongoing problems for the rest of their life, where their life will be shortened and their exposure to disease and drug use higher. What's loving about that? Is there something we're missing? Because just because you feel good doing something is not a good reason. Right? Don't pedophiles say the same thing? So that's not going to cut it, is it? That's not a good reason. Heterosexuals do it because we desire it for the purpose of of reproduction and building a family in which we can share a loving experience that doesn't involve fecal material leakage or emotional or mental disorders or on average 20 years loss of life. Heterosexual sex does not in and of itself lead to that. I'm not talking about people who may abuse that. We're talking about the sex act. The, the lifestyle. Homosexual sex does all of that in the negative senses that we've been talking about. Heterosexual sex does not. Goes on to say the potential for injury is exacerbated by the fact that the intestine has only a single layer of cells separating it from the highly vascular, full of blood, tissue, Therefore, any organisms that are introduced into the rectum have a much easier time establishing a foothold for infection than they would in a vagina. The single layer tissue cannot withstand the friction associated with penile penetration. That's why they tear all the time. That's why they have to have on staff at many of these porno video sites a proctologist. I've read about it because I do studies about the damage of anal sex and these things come up. It's like, Okay, they know how damaging it is. They've got proctologists there, ready to go, because they have to be stitched up. Cannot withstand the friction associated with penile penetration resulting in traumas that expose both participants to blood, organisms in feces, and a mixing of body bodily fluids. Furthermore, Ejaculate has components that are immunosuppressive. This allows the sperm to invade the human defenses of the female 
We're going to get to damages to females, but we're talking about anal sex. would be the same thing. Vade the immune uh, system's defense of the female. Rectal insemination of rabbits has shown that sperm impaired the immune defenses of the recipient. Semen may have a similar impact on humans. So it goes on to discuss all kinds of other things, right? Anal cancer, chlamydia, giardiolambia, herpes, HIV, HPV, gonorrhea, syphilis, hepatitis, B and C. It goes on and on to describe all kinds of problems that result from homosexual sex. So it's not really disputable. These are just not facts that homosexuals want to talk about. They'll talk about other forms of abuse, but they never appear willing to talk about what they're actually doing to themselves and to the other party, right? Said so, says so right here, the friction is resulting in traumas that expose both participants to blood, organisms, and feces, and a mixing of bodily fluids. What about that? Do you think there's any problem exposing people to blood, organisms, and feces, and mixing of bodily fluids in ways that heterosexuality does not? Seems like that would be a problem for many reasons, many of which are actually then in fact discussed i described right there and then discuss further through here. You can read the rest of this article on your own. I highly encourage you to do it if you haven't already.